There's new Windows, there's new Surface, and there's new AI. Diving deep into Techtember, whatever we're calling it, Microsoft held their AI Surface Windows event today, and there's a lot to talk about. Some things that weren't talked about, some things that weren't on stage, and so there was a decent amount of announcements compared to previous Surface events, and I think this is why Microsoft was really pushing that AI aspect rather than the Surface component of this event. Either way, there was a lot announced, and kind of let's just dive into uh, the nutshell version of what Microsoft announced today. So the first big thing that Microsoft announced today is that the next giant update, not Windows 12, the Windows 23 H2 update is going to be coming on uh, the 26th. So starting next week, and typically Microsoft rolls this out in a stage pattern where you got to be looking for it if you want to get it. But either way, uh, Microsoft is going to be rolling out a bunch of stuff, including this new paint that you see here with layers and some AI stuff. There's a, a password manager that's kind of built in. There's uh, updates to the photos app there's a snipping tool with the ocr recognition uh, clipchamp can now actually integrate with icloud uh, notepad of all things <laughs> is now going to be automatically saving and it can remember uh, things that were open when you last when you closed it so there you go the new outlook is coming to windows uh, they're, they're shipping that updated file explorer. That is definitely going to be part of it. And of course, Copilot. Microsoft has rebranded. It's not Windows Copilot anymore. It's just Copilot. Copilot is uh, the what they call it on every platform now. Whether you like it, you love it, you don't want it, it's a coming. Now, I will say it's a little weird integration. Not necessarily that right bar, but if you look, there's going to be a Copilot button on the taskbar next to search. Why aren't these the same thing? I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure why those aren't the same thing, but maybe, I don't know, whatever. Uh, it's coming to Windows and it's coming next update. And uh, we don't know how it's going to be paid for yet. That was one of the things I was hoping Microsoft was going to discuss. But as of right now, it continues to be free and Bing, sort of Bing branded powered. And so maybe they're holding off that saying like, hey, maybe one day we'll do ads. But as of right now, they're kind of going just kind of cr crazy all in. They are shoving it in and they're going to try to get you hooked and then probably Probably try to get you to pay for it. Maybe I'm speculating because we don't know. We know that AI queries are more expensive than your traditional search, but as of right now, it is included. Now, one thing you might be able to conclude or speculate here is that maybe Microsoft's betting on that, okay, we're going to introduce this, but maybe not a lot of people use it. And so the actual uptake might be lower than we think. You got to remember that Microsoft shoves a lot of things in Windows and sometimes they get used. Timeline is a perfect example. The My People app and then they just don't materialize. I suspect this AI stuff will be slightly different, but again, if there's not a huge uptake of people using it, then the impact on Microsoft's financials may not be, you know, all that big of a deal. We will see. We will see. It's really too early to see, but there's also other features like when a uh, new backup uh, utility or integration, I should say, is coming. But uh, the real hero of Microsoft's, you know, next big update is this Copilot integration. That button you're going to see everywhere. That is the new icon. And that is what Microsoft really wants you to be paying attention to at the end of the day. Because it's AI. It's not a Surface event. It's AI. We know that because, hey, the business side gets a new feature as well. Uh, this is called <laughs> Windows 365 Chat. And effectively, this candidly, I think is where Microsoft is going to make most of their money through AI. I don't think it's going to be a consumer. I shouldn't say consumers aren't going to get use out of it, but the cons the business side is way more useful than the consumer side because on the business side, you have tons of data. And as long as that data is stored within the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, Copilot can just navigate through that and pull out the relevant and pertinent information. That I think is likely the best use case so far that we've really seen with uh, this GPT open AI stuff that Microsoft is pursuing. Uh, this is obviously a premium feature. Microsoft is charging, I think it's starting at 30 bucks a month, but it, you know, it's really going to depend on how many users. And we all, if you know Microsoft corporate pricing, there's a sticker price and then there's a price you pay depending on how many people you're actually bringing over and everything else. So um, that was 
really another big focus for Microsoft was this corporate side. So you've got the consumer side on the Windows, you've got the corporate side with this chat stuff. But the most things that people were interested in, at least personally, was the Surface hardware. So Microsoft announced a couple pieces of hardware, and I think a lot of people might be a little disappointed in, in some of this. Not that they're not good pieces. Actually, the Surface Laptop Studio 2, I use the Laptop Studio on the road all the time. It's a great, it's a great device. I have no real issues with it. And this is a to-be-expected just kind of upgrade right you're going to get a 13th gen uh, core chip so you can get an i7 you can get all the way up to 64 gigabytes of ram you can get up to two terabytes of storage and you can get up to a geforce rtx 4060 for the low 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 very low price of 3700 dollar dues now it does start at uh two thousand dollars and for two thousand dollar dues you're going to get the 13th gen intel core i7 16 gigs of ram and a 512 gigabyte ssd and intel iris xe graphics uh you know the entry price is probably i think the sweet spot for most people is actually going to be the 2400 version which will get you the core i7 16 gigs of ram it really bumps the GPT, gpu up to an rtx 4050 and that's where i think probably the the entry level sweet spot is uh unless you really need that 4060 so that is the Surface Laptop Studio 2. You can now pre-order it shipping here in the very near future. And that's, you know, one of the devices. The other one, which will probably sell in a lot higher volume, is the Surface Laptop Go 3, which you see right here. And so the Laptop Go 3 is, just think of the Surface Laptop, Surface Go, but in a laptop form, obviously. Uh, it's going to come in multiple colors. The most versatile platform or color is going to be platinum, and that will start at $799. And for $799, dues, you're going to get 8 gigs of RAM, 250 gigs of storage, SSD storage, obviously. Uh, it's not that other junk that we've seen on the lower end stuff. It is an actual SSD. And so these are, unfortunately, 12th gen Intel Core i5-1235U processors. So they're more on that entry-level side. Uh, Intel Iris XE graphics. And so again, starting at seven ninety nine, not too bad. Fifteen hours of battery life. They've these are, I, I think, very good student laptops. Although again, Surface isn't known for its value, and so you can for seven ninety nine, you can certainly find a better device. But it's not going to be as clean looking. It's not probably not going to be made of the same materials. I don't have too much of an issue with these things. Uh, just kind of know that you're not getting the latest and greatest, but you're getting a decent piece of hardware for seven hundred ninety nine bucks. The thing that kills me about this, of, of, of all the things, like this laptop probably should have been announced in June. Like this would have been a great back to school laptop, but here we are, you know, it's not even available yet. Like this was a good back to school device. And unfortunately it completely missed that market. And so that's, that's rough in, in my opinion. So that's a bit of a miss there. Now, the other thing you're probably wondering, but Brad, what about the Surface Lap or Surface Go, the successor to one of these guys? The Surface Go 4 was not on stage. It was not announced. There is a business version kind of as we expected. So if you're a corporate entity, you can order these things, but it looks like the consumer side, you're out of luck. If you want some entry-level Surface hardware, you're, you're, you're out of luck. I mean, that's the only way to describe it at this point. So, which really brings up an interesting thing. There's been a ton of drama in the world of Windows this week, right? Panos Panay was not on stage because he's no longer at the company. He left. Uh, we're still working out those details about whether, you know, the whole exit thing. He is now supposedly, according to Bloomberg, over at Amazon. But, you know, I'm not reading too much into that, at least not yet. So this is the first event without Panos Panay. And it's a whole different team leading it. So someone's going to come out and say, well, this event wasn't great because Panos wasn't there. Well, you know, you got to be realistic here. Panos was helping lead and run things right up until this week. So all this stuff he was, you know, a part of. It, we don't know if because of the lack of Surface stuff, uh, that's the reason he left. There has been a report out from Windows Central, and I've been hearing this, actually been saying it for a while. Microsoft's been cutting a lot of things that just aren't profitable, which is why we don't see any more Surface Duos, which is why we're only seeing the Surface Go 4 go commercial only. Only, which is why Microsoft really contracted a lot of what the Surface brand is. We didn't even see a Surface Pro, you guys. Like, Surface Pro is the bread and butter of the Surface brand, and that was not on stage. There was not a Pro X, there was not a Surface Pro. Maybe they're going to have another event for it. Maybe they're saving it for a Windows 12 launch. Let's try to be optimistic and think that's their approach. Like, hey, Windows 12 is coming. We want a hero device to do it. The Surface Pro is the way to go. I will buy that argument. I will buy that argument, assuming that it comes to fruition and that becomes a reality. So, yeah, no Surface uh, Pro there. So if you've got one, continue to hold on to it because it's going to continue to be... Like, they're good devices. I don't have any issues with them. It's just I was hoping maybe we'd see a Rev. But 
here we are. Anyways, Panos is out, and we're seeing just a change of the guard in the world of Windows, which means there's a lot of changes going on. And um, that was the nutshell of the event. I don't, people were hoping for a surprise of some sort and or other, but nope, you know, that's, I think the biggest surprise, if you want to call it that, is that the big Windows 11 update is coming next month, and the AI is coming. It's coming hard, it's coming fast, and it's coming consistently. So, there you go, my friends. Uh, that is the wrapping up of the event. And as always, make sure to keep it subscribed here because then the BS on this channel is me.